You are listening to the Cattle Call Podcast. This is the place where computer-aided design and drafting meets humor and practicality, with a touch of business acumen thrown in for fun. Jim and Rocco, the owners of Zentech Consultants, the premier U.S. technology consulting firm for architecture, engineering, construction, and manufacturing, discuss the fascinating world of CAD with some humor and some honesty. The Cattle Call Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Cattle Call Podcast with Jim and Rocco from Zentech Consultants. I am Jim, your entertaining and fun host. And with me, as always, is my partner, Rocco. And who said you're fun? Listen, compared to you, (laughs) dude, you're you're like talking to a burlap sack some days. Come on. And that's why. (laughs) I have to liven everything up with the engineering joke of the week. Okay, you ready for this one, Rocco? I'm ready. Here we go. So so I'm, I'm sure, you, are you familiar with, with the engineer's worldview? Have you ever heard of this? No. All right. So you know the old saw they say that, you know, to an optimist, the glass is always half full. And to a pessimist, the glass is always half empty. And to uh-huh. an engineer... The glass has a factor of safety equal to 2.0. See, so there you go. Huh? <laughs> uh, oh, awful man. engineering jokes. I keep going deeper and deeper down that road oh, every God. time. <laughs> they just keep getting worse. And that's the whole plan. Eventually, you're just going to quit. That's just, just going to give me all the money from the business and quit. Just going to have to hear these jokes anymore. That's my plan. So, <laughs> all right, folks. So we have a special guest on the show today. Uh, David Mills is here. He is one of our technology specialist here at Zentech, and he's agreed to join us on the show. Uh, yeah, let's be honest, it's not that we really gave him a choice. This is what he's getting paid to do today. Uh, but you know, <laughs> we like to maintain the illusion of free will anyway. Uh, so Dave, thank, thank you actually for being here. We appreciate it. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Okay. So, you know, Dave handles a, a bunch of different tech solutions for us here at Zentech. But, um, you know, we asked him to be on the show today to talk specifically about Procore. Uh, and really how Procore works in a practical field usage scenario, I guess. Um, but you know, before we get into the topic for today, let's, uh, let's let you guys find out a little bit about Dave. So Dave, why don't you uh, tell folks about your background and, and what very bad life choices landed you working for Rocco and I? So, yeah, I've been within the uh, construction industry for, for nearly a decade now, and it's a very strong love-hate relationship Uh <laughs> Definitely when I start hearing bad engineering jokes um, yeah. on that second part that's, of that. That's on the hate side. Uh, you should. <laughs> it's meant to be. Uh, yeah, and I, I've kind of worked everywhere from, you know, I started off as, as an intern. I was working through college uh, within construction. And, you know, my degree is also within construction management and engineering. Um, kind of worked my way up several positions, everything from, you know, junior estimator and estimator. I was... Uh, in the field for a little bit, uh, utilizing, you know, Procore, which is what we're going to be talking about, um, and kind of went to an owner's rep position as well. So I've kind of kind of been uh, all, all around uh, the construction world, uh, and especially in a lot of roles. Okay. So there you go. And then, you know, he wound up being here. So it's just been a, a downhill slide ever since he met us. So, all right. So let, let's get into some Procore stuff here. Uh, look, I, I'm sure that most of our listeners know about Procore, right, at least at, at a basic level as a construction management system. Uh, but it does a lot more than just handling schedules and invoices, right? It, it really does have a, a pretty remarkable range of functionality uh, that I'm going to let David tell us about. Uh, but I really want to focus today on a little bit less of, of you know, Procore's esoteric functions, and stay more on the, the day-to-day field operations, which is really kind of where Dave lives here for us. Uh, so, 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 Dave, why don't you give listeners an overview on, you know, what Procore is and where you think it plays best for construction field staff? So, Procore, if you're not familiar with it, uh, basically at the end of the day, it's just a cloud-based uh, construction, you know, software management kind of system. Um, and... There are a lot of project management related stuff, as you said, invoicing and and change events. However, the the field aspect is really the, I would say the gold standard out there. Um, One of my my favorite things was 
I always love to walk around with an iPad and instead of having a half set of drawings or even a full size set of drawings walking around, uh, looking at all those details, um, you know, I was able to track notes live with my super uh, superintendent and subcontractors um, without having to go back to the trailer. And that saved a lot of my time. Uh, so it really did help the field productivity and also the quality assurance, you know, tremendously. Okay. And that's a nice thing. I mean, they see you know, the iPads are definitely a, a useful way to go. Um, and Procore works right with that. But I think it works with pretty much any kind of mobile device, really, from, you know, phones and, and uh, Androids. And I think you can even do it on, like, the, the Surface Pros and Windows-based stuff, just using the, the browser. Yep. So, uh, But, yeah, it's real yep, convenient, yep. you know. Every, everything that you're, you're talking about from, you know, punch items and, uh, you know, like you said, you're looking at the plans, marking up the plans, taking photos, all, all being handled right through that one central system and being fed back into the cloud where everybody can access it. So, um, hey, so, so Rocco, let's, let's, let's wake you up a little bit. So, you know, D Dave and I are both <laughs> certified broker consultants, right? Uh, but, but we don't really sell the software here at Zentech, right? I mean, you know, where, where do we actually integrate most often with our clients on the Procore front? Yeah, it's really from the um, from the consulting angle. You know, the, the, the deeper impl implementations, the training, um, the consulting services, a lot of times folks don't, don't I mean, we, we can help you, you know, take you from the beginning, in, from inception through to full setup and, and deep deployment. But honestly, most folks come to us after they've, done an initial implementation with Procore Direct and and even done some initial training through their online tutorials. Uh, they, they come to us when they need more advanced setup and, and more advanced training. So whether it be setting up custom reports or building dashboards uh, or developing specific workflows or uh, even, even training that's specific to their needs. We offer a handful of of, of generic classes that we run either public or private that you can see on our website. But if you're looking for more of an advanced uh, set of, of training to be set up specifically for your team, that's where we come in. There you go. There you go. There, there's Rocco's sales pitch for today. He's happy and now you can go back to sleep on his job. Okay. Uh, there you go. Good night, Rocco. <laughs> Have a good one, Rocco. <laughs> <laughs> see, I got proof. Even Dave knows what he does all day. See, we got, we got two on one today. You're done. So... <laughs> All right, look, you know, I, I kind of want I want listeners to walk away from today's show with a, with at least a few ideas in their head on tools and processes in Procore uh, that they may not be using, or, or at the very least, right, better ways that we've seen people implement those tools and make them, you know, work easier and faster on a daily basis. And I think if we can give uh, folks even, you know, one, one positive takeaway from today's conversation, I, I, I'll call that a win. Um, so, so Dave, let me ask you this. If, if you had to pick one Procore tool for field people to use and master that is, you know, it's going to make their life easier, which one would that be and why? Let me think here. Um, if I, we're going to kind of group these together um, because they're both very similar. And it's something people already work with on a daily basis, but it's going to be the, both the drawings and the specifications tool. And kind of the reason I'm saying that is, you know, I briefly brought this up when I was explaining Procore. Uh, but the best thing about the drawings tool is you can have an offline version of the drawings uh, that are the most up-to-date schedule. So, you know, if you're on maybe a several bulletins or in a project that has had a lot of changes, you will always have that updated version on your, you know, your iPad, your iPhone, your Android, whatever it may be, your computer. And, you know, as you're walking around, you can take notes. You can um, take photos and attach it to that drawing, uh, whether that be for scheduling reasons. You know, if you need to make a three-week schedule and, you know, you wanted to remember what a certain area or room was at, uh, verify all the subcontractors' work. Uh, my personal out of the drawings tool i absolutely love when i can click on like an enlarged floor plan or a detail or section and it will take me to that drawing uh, automatically so i don't need to be flipping through you know 20 pages i might go too far and you know have to go back i don't need to be 
stapling corners of pages and putting <laughs> void or old pages on that. I did that as an intern, uh, so I know how know how annoying and, and time consuming that can be. Plus, you got to print the drawings, and that's a cost as well. Um, so at the end of the day, yeah, the, between those two, those are my favorite. And the specs basically the same thing. Yeah, you just click on a spec and take you right to you know the door hardware schedule or uh, you know, your cast in place concrete spec, whatever it may be. Um, and like I said, verifying those live was amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, noting down whatever changes you find in the field, right, that have to be addressed or open for RFI or whatever. Yeah, it's, those are great tools. I like those myself. Um, yeah, you always got to always gotta double check your subcontractors because some of them, I don't know if their measuring tape is wrong or what <laughs> um, out there. Uh, the, the plan say it's ten foot wall, and you, you got eight foot ceilings there for some reason. I'm like, what are you doing, man? Yeah, that's because they, you know, they, so, they're, they're, their tape manufacturer is eyeball, right? It's it's I, eyeball <laughs> measurements. They they're fine. So, oh goodness. So yeah, look, the the reality is, anytime that we talk about you know software and tools, right? We I, I think we not only need to look at you know the most used or the coolest ones like Dave was just talking about but but I think it's also important to focus on the tools that are there that people aren't using enough um, you know look it, it, it is understandable right in a, in a complex construction management system like Procore there are just going to be features and functions that you know either we just miss we don't know they're there we haven't heard about it, or we may know they're there, but we just have not had the time to learn how to use them effectively, right? Even though they could have really positive impacts on our work, we've just been too busy. Um, so David, let me ask you that then. What, what do you see as the most underutilized uh, Procore tools that field people should really be looking at? So I would say the inspections tool, however, um, I would recommend, you know, the, the office staff definitely set that up for you. Uh, but the inspection tool, and what's the greatest thing about this is most people just think it as, hey, when your city inspector comes out or whatever, whoever it may be from, you know, an official standpoint uh, to get it signed off. I like to use the inspection tool as kind of like a, uh, basically like a, I mean, it's an inspection, I should say, but like a checklist as well, uh, I like to use the example of uh, pre-pour checklists uh, before you start doing your slab on grade because ripping up concrete, uh, both expensive and time consuming yes. uh, and uh, just annoying to begin with. Uh, but you could do this for uh, owner supplied equipment. And basically you could have a whole list of items and it could be, like I said, provided from everyone. Um, or again, a specific vendor, and yes, no, maybe, have all those questions on there. And then my favorite thing is the signature portion of it. Uh, and you can have a subcontractor sign off on it to ensure, again, if we're using the the uh, slab on grade example, you know, you want to have, make sure your, all your underground plumbing's in, uh, so you can have the plumbing subcontractor sign off on it to ensure he's got all of his inspections, to ensure he's got all of his underground in. Um, and again, we could put the electrical on there, we could put the concrete guy on there, have all of their signatures. Uh, plus it also puts them on the line a little bit too. I'm like, hey, did I did I do this? Did I, you know, did I get, just double check to make sure you got an inspection? Especially on some of these larger projects or even some of the, I mean, I've had inspectors that just don't care at the end of the day, city inspectors. Um, and they just come out there, sign off on something and then, you know, move on the merry way. And, you know, I, I really do like to see that we do have more than just uh, his word on it. We have, you know, our plumbing subcontract that we hired or, or whoever's signature on it. Yeah. Again, owner equipment's another good one. Uh, when you need all that rough in information and if you have a owner vendor come out, and look at everything. He could then sign off on it, and you could start getting that process out there. Yeah, you could track pretty much anything. It, it is amazing, though, how how careful and attentive subs get when when they actually have to sign their names to things. Is it? It's crazy. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I tell you what, folks. Let's take a quick break here, so that uh, you know Rocco and I can earn some money 
from our sponsors so we can pay Dave's paycheck. Uh, and when we get back, I want to get Dave to kind of walk us through some of the, you know, uh, implementation and, and setup concerns around working with Procore. All right. So hang in there, folks. We'll be back in just a minute with more of the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, everybody. Today, we are our own sponsor. This is Jim and Rocco with Zen Tech Consultants. And what do we want to talk to the folks about today, Rocco? Uh, we're going to talk about how to make barbecue meatballs. How does that sound, Jim? Sounds good to me. All right, all right. Now, all right. All right so we're here to talk about our Procore services. We are Procore certified consultants here. So, Jim, what kind of services do we offer? So when it comes to your Procore software, we're here to help you guys with just about everything you need from getting it set up, configuring it to your needs, importing your client database and your previous contracts, structuring reports, or even just helping you guys on the daily with, with the, you know, the workflow and, and the things that you have to do on a regular basis in terms of timesheets and really just about anything from, like we said, setup and configuration all the way through advanced training for all of your staff on how to use Procore in the, the method and the you know, way that works best for your firm. So Rocco, if folks need a little bit of help with Procore, how do they reach us? Yeah, you can reach us, hit up our website. We have a new website, it's zentechconsultants.net. That's Z-E-N-T-E-K, consultants.net. Or give us a call, 866-824-4459. Or drop us an email, sales at zentechconsultants.net. All right, and if you call now, Rock will tell you how to make meatballs. All right, folks, <laughs> we'll talk to you later. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Cattle Ball Podcast, where we're talking with David Mills, who is a Procore expert extraordinaire here at Zentech, uh, about the best ways to kind of use Procore in a field-focused workflow. Um, look, you know, when you deal with software developers and resellers for systems like Procore, you, you tend to get a lot of focus on their high-end tools and esoteric capabilities and such, and, and they tend to drop the ball a little bit on daily use. Uh, th th there's really a pervasive attitude of, you know, oh, you know, people already know how to do that, or, oh, you know, you can just watch one of our, our how-to videos, uh, you know, for the people who need to handle those basic daily real-world tasks. Um, and, and that's an area where David actually does a lot of, of work for us here at Zentech, you know, helping people kind of structure their daily construction management workflows for efficient work processes. Um, so, so, you know, Dave, if you could give any tips uh, for a company who is, you know, either just getting around to implementing or is using Procore already, right, to, to make that happen, what would they be? Yeah, so two tips. Uh, the first one is going to be, Start small. Uh, Procore and really any software at the end of the day um, is difficult to learn. I'll, I'll, I'll just put it straight out there. Uh, you're going to have people from all different backgrounds. Some people may be really good at using computers in your office. Other people, not so much. Um, so really, when you're starting to get these processes in place, do a couple of them at a time. Uh, maybe, you know, start all your RFIs on there. Uh, then, you know, move on to your drawings and, and kind of go from there. However, while you're doing this, and this is kind of part of the second uh, tip here. Well, it is the second tip, I should say, is you want to have a good set of uh, standard procedures and, and steps uh, you want to follow through with. And uh, you want to, you know, from the you know management side and, you know, if you're managing superintendents and field staff, um, this is where you are going to want to kind of keep them in line and make sure they are uh, all having the same processes. And it may be as an executive um, or major stakeholder that you will have to set up these processes without maybe even knowing about them. So you do want to bring in that collaboration from your superintendents to get that uh, you know, standard operating procedure in place. Um, and, you know, an example could be just starting to name files the same way. Um, you know, filling out daily reports, for example, uh, there are a lot of, of options available for daily reports that you guys could fill out. Uh, everything from, you know, manpower on the site to deliveries. And maybe for the first, you know, couple months, you don't, you don't fill everything out. You know, you just kind of put in the work, you know. Daily, daily work hours from your subcontractors and, and really start expanding from there till you have 
uh, your staff comfortable with using it. Um, and again, you kind of want to have that across the board. Uh, so those are definitely probably the two biggest tips. Um, the third tip is just be patient. You know, pro <laughs> that, core, that one you they do have, need. yeah. Yeah, the, the patience is pretty thin in the construction to begin with, and especially when, you know, people are spending money and, and they want to see fast turnaround results, um, you will get your results. Uh, it's just not going to be – you're probably not going to be expected as, as fast as you uh, want it to be uh, at the end of the day. But it's one of the, you know, best investments to get yourself a cloud-based construction platform, whether that. Procore, you know, and others. Um, you will get a return on your investment and time saved. And again, quality improvement, um, workflow improvements, uh, you know, efficient hours worked as well, uh, you know, as opposed to spending 30 minutes doing one simple task. Procore can do 30 tasks in that one minute that were, you know, may have taken you that amount of time. Absolutely. You know, look, yeah, I, I tell people when I talk to them, like, look at it. You guys are in construction. Think, think, think of setting this up like, like putting in the foundation and the footings for your building. Everything else rests on this. If, it may take a long time, but it's got to be right. And if that part isn't right, nothing's going to be right. You know, take the time and, yeah. and get this squared away. You know? That's a good analogy. I think I'm going to use that from now on. Hey, look, I did a good thing today. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. I'm going home. I'm done. <laughs> that kind of reacts the joke from earlier. Oh, okay, good. It's a counterbalance. <laughs> uh, all right. So look, you know, listeners know, I, I kind of like to be fair when we do the podcast and, and not always just focus on the positives of, of a system, right? I mean, I get it. We work a lot with Procore here at Zentech, but the truth is that, you know, Procore, like any technology system, has flaws and shortcomings. Um, and, and now that doesn't mean that they aren't being worked on, improved with each release, right? Procore does a good job at that. But I, I kind of want to balance the presentation here and talk a little bit about, um, you know, both the positive and the negative of, of the current version of, of Procore. So, you know, Dave, with, with that in mind, I guess, you know, what, what are the real, the, the negative features or, or the limitations, I guess, that you see in Procore right now that, that people should really be aware of? The thing I absolutely hate is that Procore actually used to have a syncing function. So you could, you know, have your, there's a documents tool on Procore. You could have all your documents on Procore for your project sync to um, your SharePoint or Dropbox or even your local server on your computer um, for your, you know, company. They've got rid of that and kind of put it off to a third party that can manage it. But man, that would that was such a, a gold standard for them to have because I mean you got all these big names out here, like I said, SharePoint and Dropbox who can sync files automatically between, you know, several different devices. Procore, you need to do that as well. Sync it between the online version and sync it between, you know, Windows folders on your on your desktop. Uh, it would save just a tremendous amount of time. That's that is one of the heartbreaks I do have is, is sometimes it can be a little bit annoying to uh, navigate the, you know, documents and download files to edit them and check them out and, and all that. No, I agree with you there. I mean, it was nice while we, you know, when they had it, but I think from a, from a business standpoint, I think they divorced themselves from it mainly because it was, you know, a maintenance and an administrative hassle for them. It was, it was dealing with oh, problems 100%. that were outside 100%. the pro core realm. So they're just like, ah, let, let third-party people handle it. But, yeah, it, it did definitely make it a little tougher for, for actual process work. I agree 100% on that. Um, so, so, Rocco, you know, from a, I guess from a client uh, contact standpoint, right, what do you hear from them as, as the biggest benefits and, and the biggest limits that the clients see working in ProPort? Well, I think one of the – in, in – in an age where it's um, so hard to find, you know, good qualified employees, uh, one benefit is that Procore is all over, right? I mean, if you're a player in construction, you're you're pretty much using Procore, you know, so you're going to be able to find people who have at least a little bit of exposure um, to the product. I, I think 
one of the downsides is that it's um that i hear a lot is it's expensive you know yeah. it's not it's, an oh, easy yeah, a, a low cost solution to deploy by by any means and so you know for for a small firm it it's it's hard to even crack that door open and say hey let's move to to procore so that's kind of what i what i hear and see out there yeah that's a fair that's a fair assessment i mean they they really are they're they're an erp level structure they are not meant for you know small 15 20 person firms you know what i mean um right. absolutely the case so um all right so you know i think one thing that is you know absolutely vital right in, in kind of the what we'll call it the complex and iterative world of construction management uh, it, it's that your control system can't just work in a vacuum right data needs to flow across you know multiple firms and countless industries and an infinite number of problems you know, all of which can be uh, you know, listed or have to be worked with in any number of file formats from different software systems. Um, and, and that really is a major consideration whenever you're, you're planning and working with any kind of a construction management system, right? That interoperability. Uh, so, so Dave, how does, how does Procore handle working with other software systems, right? Particularly the ones that are likely most in use by field level staff. So Procore does have an app marketplace. And again, this is not something your, your typical field person would um, you know, get involved with. They'd want to ask uh, you know, one of their Procore professionals, a part of their team or project management, who may be much more familiar with the back end of Procore. Um, and a lot of the, the, they call it the Procore app marketplace. Um, has a lot of integrations on there that you know people use all the time. Uh, an example being you know Bluebeam, uh, Microsoft Teams. You know when you are setting up meetings between people, you could uh, put put in your Microsoft Teams and uh, or Zoom or whatever you know major uh, conference calling system you guys you know you guys use, and it really does have that capability to do all that um, and. If, if you're not a part of Procore within construction uh, and you're just listening to this because you do have other construction apps that, you know, you develop, uh, you can look at Procore's API and put your software and integrate it somehow within Procore for anyone listening to our podcast that's, you know, not associated uh, with a, you know, field use or a project management uh, at a construction company. And, you know, Procore also supports, you know, PDFs and Word documents and all that when you put it in there. Um, I had not personally have had the option of using the model viewer um, in there, but you can view 3D models on Procore uh, using Revit files. Um, so, you know, that is something that I have never personally have had my hands on, but I've always wanted to, to be a part of a project that somebody did put the 3D model on there. Uh, so... And that that's very useful for numerous reasons. Yeah. Hey, hey we can make that happen for you. We got we got plenty of Revit models sitting around from our tag group. So we'll get we'll, we'll get you one and let you play with it so you can see it. Oh nice. It, it's actually really cool. Um so so look, you know, we, when we have guests on, right, e, e, even the, the, the unfortunate ones that work for us, uh, we, we like to give <laughs> them a chance to to tell our listeners something that I didn't think to ask them. Um you know, though in Dave's case, you know, he is gonna have to avoid saying anything mean about me because he works directly for me. But but shots at Rocco are always welcome on the cattle call. That's fair that's, game. That's fair game, <laughs> yes. So, all right, so so what about it, Dave? What 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 else do you think that people listening should know about Procore for field work? Uh, definitely get your field staff a tablet, uh, whether that be Android or iPad. Um, as far as I'm aware, Zentech's not sponsored by Apple because they'd be probably paying me a little bit more. Um, <laughs> We'd all be but, making a little bit more. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, but yeah, don't, you know, because the, the versions between the, the Windows version, it's, it's a little bit more sophisticated uh, versus the iPad version. The iPad version, uh, I, you know, when I was in the field, I taught people, you know, my, a lot of the foremen who were um, 70, 70 years and older, I taught them how to use their iPad that their company provided for them and, you know, showed them Procore. I only showed them the basic stuff, but they absolutely loved it. Like I said, the drawings tool. Um, I had one one carpentry foreman 
every single day he'd walk back and back and forth to his trailer once an hour. Um, and it was about a 10 minute walk, about five minutes to the trailer, five minutes back to typically where he was working at in the building. And once I showed him how to use the drawings tool on Procore, uh, he, he was just so happy. I've never seen, I, I know the guy for a whole month and I'd never, never have seen him smile before, but, and then, and then after that, he kept coming up to me. I'm like, Hey, you know, I see you do this. Can I do that too? And obviously I was, you know, a part of the, the, you know, same GC, so I'm like, unfortunately, you can't do that. Um, that's not a part of you. Know, you're a subcontractor. You can't do daily reports because it's a daily reports for me. Um, but you know, it definitely got the conversation going, and you know, it's like, wow, this is this made my job easier. And I think at the end of the day, everyone wants an easier job. Everyone wants, no one wants to work extra hours, um, and you know, it's just being stress free and everything. So. Definitely, definitely look at it and, you know, don't be afraid to help your other coworkers out who may be struggling with Procore or even other technologies that make their lives easier. Good advice. See, technology, when, when you use it the right way, makes your life easier. Okay. All right, folks. So let's get out of here and we'll let Gay, uh, you know, Dave get back to helping our clients. Um, and Rocco can go back to, you know, taking his daily nap, which I think we interrupted here. Uh, but Dave, I do want to huh? thank you for, here you go. See, we woke him up again. <laughs> I just want to say thanks. I think that Dave, was him just reacting. Show. I don't think he woke up yet. <laughs> I think he just rolled over and snored. Is that what it is? <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> uh, Dave, we really appreciate you taking the time to, to be out here with us today and give us some good info, man. Have a good one, brother. Thank you, Dave. Yep. All right, folks, we'll catch one. you next time on the... Cattle Call Podcast. All right, everybody. Today's Cattle Call was brought to you courtesy of Zentech Consultants. That's Rocco and I. Uh, Zentech Consultants works with design and manufacturing firms to help our clients purchase and implement the software that they need in these complex industries. Uh, we provide a single point of contact for clients to buy, develop, and learn the most vital software systems for your specific needs. Uh, Zentech strives to be your trusted technology partner from your initial needs all the way through long-term support and training for your entire staff. So Rocco, why don't you tell them how to reach out to Zentech? All right, yeah, you can reach out to us through zentechconsultants.net. You can email us at sales at zentechconsultants.net or you can even call us 866-824-4459. Excellent, we look forward to hearing from y'all.